Three years ago, a company called Charm was founded to revolutionize textual user interfaces. Since then, they have released a couple of CLI tools and libraries to do that. And today we're gonna check out one of them, which is called Gum. Let's get right to it. Hey, Vlad here from devinsideu.com, welcome to another video. Now, if you're new here, you should probably know that this is mostly a Scala channel, so everything we do over here is Scala flavored in one way or the other. However, I love software tools, especially colorful CLIs, so what Charm is doing is right up my alley. Today, we're gonna have a super quick demo of one of their newest tools called Gum, which is written in Go. Well, technically, everything they do is written in Go, and also, we don't really care uh, which language it's written in because we're gonna use it from Bash. Now, what does it do? Well, think of it as a a tiny little helper that glues your bash script like a bubblegum would. In particular, it's very useful to write interactive bash scripts. Let's say you want some user input. Well, call gum input. Let's say you want a CLI version of a dropdown. Well, call gum choose. Now we've played with it on stream yesterday and we needed a guinea pig. And so we ended up writing an awesome interactive bash script that I'm gonna show you right after the message from our sponsors, which is awesome people like you. I've been creating content for over five years at this point and everything I've done so far is free here on YouTube. So if you have the means, please consider contributing to a free tech education. There's many of you and only one of me. So I'd like you to know that all it takes is a dollar. It adds up. Thank you. Now, I understand that probably most of you are not Scala developers, so here's what's up. In the Scala ecosystem, there is a tool called Jitterate, which is a CLI templating tool. You say G8, and then you give it a short version of a GitHub URL, so it downloads some template of most likely a Scala starter project, it evaluates it, and you know it creates a full-fledged Scala project based on it. Now, I have a couple of my own templates, and so together with GUM, I've written this interactive bash script that lists all of them, allows you to choose one of them, and then it goes into the directory that you created, it optionally init's a git directory and shoves everything into the initial commit, and it offers you to start SBT, which is a Scala build tool, and also optionally to start VS Code. You can totally use the script for you if you wish, it's all on GitHub. However, I rather created it for myself because very often I start a new video by creating a project by using one of my generated templates, and then I init the repository, and then I start VS Code, so now I have a script that does all of these things for me. Obviously, in order for it to work, you need to have GUM installed. The poison of my choosing these days is a Nix package manager so I installed it with Nix. If you have something else, consider checking out the instructions in the readme. It's very trivial to install. It's just a tiny binary. Now in case it's not obvious, we also need Jitterate installed or at least Corsia or at least SBT, which are the tools that an average Scala developer has installed. And if you're not a Scala developer, well, you probably don't even need this bash script anyway. So just relax and enjoy the show. All right, so I'm on Windows and I usually use WSL with Ubuntu 2004 for development. So uh, back in the day, I didn't use to use package managers. And so I created sort of like my own like poor man's package manager, just a bunch of bash scripts in my uh, GitHub, and uh, there's an easy way to install all of them. So I have a sum domain. So if you go to like install.devinsideu.com, and then I call this tool DIY for Dev Inside You and then G8 for Jitterate. So if you go like this, then uh, we're going to search on my GitHub for install repositories like this. And as you can see, it's over here. Okay. So this is just the bash script that we need. And usually I include like an install script, which is over here, right? So if we copy this, it will just like download this script over here it will make it executable and then it will run okay so if you look over here what this script in turn will do it will download the other script you know make it executable and then uh, you know make it on the root so that we can move into the user local bin so that it's on the path so that we can use it. now I'm gonna go over here which is already mentioned is Ubuntu 2004 so this is my WSL2 distribution okay so if I uh, go into user local uh, bin over here you're gonna see that I already have it so I'm gonna do um, like this uh, G8 and I need like sudo, right? You don't need to do this. I'm, you know, this is just a demonstration so that you see that the install script is going to do what it's, you know, what it promised to do. So as you can see, it's not there. So if I go and just paste like these two lines or you can download the bash script on your own, right? So if we now do, uh, you know, which uh, DIY G8, then you're going to see it's, it's back over there. Now we'll have a look at the code in just a second, but uh, let me actually demo it to you first, okay? So I'm going to go into the temporary directory, which currently has a couple of folders, okay? So usually I would go, you know, G8 and then dev inside you like, 
like as you can see, like Scala seed or Scala 3 seed, but now I don't need to do uh, any of that, right? So instead of this, I'm just gonna do like this, DIY.GA, okay? So as you can see, I have three templates, so I'm gonna choose the first one, you know, I can go like up and down. Uh, so this is, by the way, com comes from Gun, but we're gonna have a look at the code in just a second. So I'm gonna press enter, so now it downloads the template, so the template is working, so this is not a gum thing, this is a jitterate thing. So I'm gonna call it, uh, I don't know, uh, this is just a uh, demo, for example, okay? Organization, okay, package, okay? So now it created a subdirectory inside of this uh, inside of this folder, and I don't need, I don't know which one. Okay, so I'm allowing the user now to choose uh, which one of them. And notice that I'm not using gum choose, which I haven't shown it to you, but I will in a second. I'm using actually gum filter. So now instead of just going like up and down, I actually can uh, search. Okay, so for example, if I do a demo, it's over there. Okay, so I press enter. So now it says, okay, cool. So do you want to init the Git repo inside of it? And I can go like left and right, or I can just press uh, Y or N. So I'm gonna press Y for yes. Okay, so it says, well, do you want to launch SBT? And for now, I'm gonna say no. Okay, do you want to launch VS Code? And I'm gonna say no again. And there we go. Okay, so and now inside of it, there's this just this is just a demo. As you can see, this is a Git repository, so I can do glol. Ta da! So let's go out real quick. Create it one more time. So I'm gonna run this command. Okay, uh, I'm gonna choose uh, this template this time. So I'm gonna call it second demo or something. By the way, uh, Gum also has a spinner, but I didn't manage. Uh, I didn't figure out how to how to make it work in such a way that it doesn't accidentally override, you know, what the next command is doing. Okay, so I'm gonna do enter enter. Okay, so uh, second demo, this one. Okay, init git repo. Yes, uh, launch SBT. Uh, still no. Uh, launch VS Code. Yes, please. Okay, so now it's gonna launch VS Code. As you can see, it's in the directory, second demo, blah, blah, blah. So if you're a Scala developer, you know what is going to happen in just a second. Metals will wake up. It will ask me if I want to import the project. Uh, but I'm not going to do any of this. Uh, in fact, I mean, I kind of want to wait until it like suggests this to me. Uh, there you go. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to say not now so that I can show it to you one more time. And, uh, you know, like this time, uh, we're going to use the third template. There we go. All right, so this is gonna be like the third demo. Okay, 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 doesn't matter. As you can see, this template is slightly different. Okay, so we're gonna do like third demo, init git repo, yes. Uh, launch SBT, this time we're gonna say yes. Okay, and after SBT, it's not going to ask me to launch VS Code because the way SBT works is that it's kind of like interactive. You start it and then you sit on in it all day until your memory runs out. Okay, so I didn't want, you know, like when you exit it, it will still ask you to like uh, start VS Code. Okay, now it takes a while to uh, to start SBT, uh, but you know, um, well, I actually kind of need to, I don't want to kill it. Okay, so uh, give, give me a second. All right, there we go. Okay, so now I can uh, get out of it. And as you can see, like the script finished. Okay, so now let's actually have a look at the script. So if I'm gonna do this, Right? So we're gonna have a look at the script, okay? So this is some bash stuff, it doesn't have anything to do with gum, but like gum is like in the middle of everything, kind of holds my entire script together like a bubble gum, okay? So for example, over here I did gum choose and I just gave it like three strings, okay? Separated by spaces, okay? So I'm running this command, whatever comes out is now is gonna be stored in, you know, DIY GA template, okay? Uh, this has nothing to do with gum, this is just to check, okay, if we have G8 installed, then this is how we're gonna install it. If we only have Corsi, then this is how we're gonna install it. And if we have SBT, then this is how we're gonna install it. Okay, then we have like an echo wait for it. Then we're actually running one of these install commands. Okay, then we list the folders. Okay, so this thing lists the folders. Uh, this is just an optional thing to make it like a little bit pretty because uh, when folders are listed like this, they are listed with, um, uh, with a, you know, uh, with a slash. And I just wanted to remove the slash. Okay, so if I do this, right? The slashes are going to be removed. It, it would have worked with the slashes as well, you know, so you can do like CD into a second demo with a slash and it's still going to work, right? But, you know, just for um, just for, for the sake of, you know, letting it be pretty, uh, I removed it, okay? And we're piping this whole thing into gum filter. Filter is the one that allows you to actually search. And remember, there is a placeholder that says, you know, select your project. Okay, then we're gonna switch into the folder. And by the way, this is a bash script, right? So it, it, it runs in a subshell. So when it finishes, we're actually back in the original folder. We're not inside, okay? We're sitting into that, and then we do gum again. This time we do gum confirm, okay? So basically, if this command uh, exits uh, with a zero, remember this is like this pop-up was a yes or no, with a zero, then this command will run, right? Because it's like and, you know, and it's gonna like init the repository, get in it, add everything, uh, create a commit and use initial commit as a message, okay? After this, we're running a similar thing, right? Should we launch the SPT and, you know, SBT, or, you know, if you don't wanna launch the SPT, well, do you wanna launch VS Code, okay? Again, gum confirm, VS Code, and then code, there is no or, okay? 
And that's it. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm going to for sure cover more tools created by this awesome charm company. In fact, I kind of indirectly did already because I made a video about the GitHub CLI and GitHub CLI behind the scenes uses a library called Glamour, also created by charm. In fact, there's also another, uh, well, actually the GitLab CLI also uses it. And there's also another tool called uh, Glow, which is a markdown render. Let me actually demo it to you real quick, right? So I'm gonna go to um, a repository over here and there's a readme inside. So if I just cat into this readme, well, it's all, you know, black and white and whatever, like nothing, nothing impressive, okay? So if I do bat into readme, uh, bat, you know, you will get some syntax highlighting, right? But it doesn't actually understand the readme. So it doesn't understand markdown. So it's not going to render it, right? So for example, it's just gonna like highlight this stuff, but it's actually not gonna make it bold, for example, okay? And with Glow, it looks like this, okay? So if we, if we scroll up a little bit, you will see, for example, this uh, passage that I just showed you, which is over here. Now this stuff is actually bold, you know? So this is a tool called Glow, uh, which is built on a library called Glamour. Cool. I hope you enjoyed this little tour. All the links are going to be down in the description, and I hope that I'm going to see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from devinsidey.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did. Subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you have the means and you want to contribute to free tech education, please consider doing so on Patreon on GitHub sponsors. And as watch my videos before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.